BC, what's going on? So it's um, still the 11th, and I just thought I'd come back on after looking at a few comments and um, finish up this pile. And a question uh, got me to uh, <laughs> to uh, get back on. Someone asked, well, what about CDs? I said, okay, so the BC is um, so uh, far out from its origins that I kind of have to explain again why I do this. Was it four or five years ago that I first discovered people were posting videos on YouTube showing their record collections and records that they've been buying? Um, I discovered that while browsing looking for stuff related to record collecting. At that time I was working a full-time job as a mental health professional and the main thing that I would do with my spare money uh, is by records and, and, and music, CDs actually as well. And so the primary focus of the videos as a result has been records, vinyl community. It doesn't mean that I don't show CDs, but the thing that got me excited about doing the videos in the first place was, oh wow, people who collect records like me and are excited about it that excited me, so that's why I show records. I have thousands of CDs and I can show them, and I do show them now and then, but they, as a form, as an art form, are not nearly as interesting or as exciting to me. So um, this is fun to show records, and every now and then, like in the last video, I show CDs like I, someone gave me some. But um, that's the reason why it's primarily vinyl, okay? Every now and then I do show CDs. Um, so I want to finish showing this pile that I have down here that I played recently. Premiata Forneria Marconi, live in the USA. Italian progressive rock band that um, after uh, the ad after the success of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, they started their own label, label Manticore. And this Italian band was one of their first signings in the US. Of course, PFM had their own... Um, Thing going in Europe already and just a fantastic band of musicians still going highly uh, skilled players the music involves everything from jazz to folk to classical very spirited and th this is the Italian version of the album PFM Cook that came out in the US with which has a slightly different maybe a little more um, I pleasing cover than this one, but I was playing this version. Canterbury and Robert White and Soft Machine loom large again. And maybe I mentioned this album, I forget. It's still down there, so that's why I'm showing it. Matching Mo's Little Red Record. I know I had this album forever. It came out in like 1973. Excellent album produced by Robert Fripp of King Crimson. Brian Eno is a guest on here. Um, Superlative after superlative, I would launch at this album. It's equal parts rock, invention, jazz, even ambient sound work on here. Um, uh, Robert Wyatt's, um, he I would uh, dare say he has not a dirty mind, but you know, he's got sex on his mind a lot. And so that is in here, you know, in. Um, Especially like when you're younger, like as a teen, it would be things that you'd hear that would be like, what do you say? What's this about? You know? Cool. Excellent album. Matching Mole's Little Red Record. Can, again, these albums from my past. Some of this music just um, in some ways will probably never be uh, bested. This is not one of Can's best albums, Soon Over Bob Luma. But it has really held up well over time, and I like it more now than when it first came out. When it first came out, it was a disappointment, because it was the first one made after Damo Suzuki left. It started off good with, um, the first song is great, Dizzy Dizzy, you know. Michael Caroli uh, holds up well as a vocalist. But then it kind of, well, it's actually chain reaction to me is the uh, weak thing here. But overall, this is... Can is a band that historically are kind of larger than life now, and deservedly so, in my mind. A band that I wish I could have seen, never saw any of the, these members play live. An Italian, another Italian band, 
area, jazz, avant-garde, rock, highly skilled musicians. Dimitrio Stratos was the vocalist, had a really interesting range, sounded a bit like Leon Thomas with this yodeling thing. He's been deceased for a while. I believe this is their very first album. Fantastic. You know, it's got the complexity, the intensity, and the variety that prog rock, and I'm talking about good prog rock, not the uh, Rick Wakeman, uh, and this is not a distant Rick Wakeman, but the fake Rick Wakeman, I've got a million keyboards bullshit that was marketed. See how everything that has something good loses its validity for the sake of the market. People get a hold of an idea and think, oh, I can make money with this, and they ruin it. That's my opinion, but Area is an example of a progressive rock that is none of those things. This is the real progressive sound. Music for the sake of music, not trying to market some shit to, to idiots. Soft Machine again, seven. Fantastic. This is after um, Robert Wyatt's out of the band, and they're going into this jazz rock vein. This one is, is, is excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Soft Machine 7. Killer album. Killer, killer, killer. Instrumental. The compositions. You can really tell the way that it's engineered. The time of this. They must have been on a budget or something because this, in my opinion, was very poorly... Re in uh, uh, mixed, engineered. You know, it could be saved. I could, you know, you could go back and get those master tapes and bump this shit up real hot. It's not hot enough for my ears, but it's a fantastic. I could just go on. Soft Machine. Now here's one that is still in the collection, but I'm actually it's going into the closet. Um, as it's been taking up space, I never play it, but. Um, it's a worthless album, and there's but there's some good pop songs on here. Sherbs, the skill, originally called Sherbet. I think they're from Australia. They had some hits way back, and this is um, these guys were jumping on the new wave pop um, bandwagon, like Fabulous Poodles or Romeo Void or something. But the deal is, these guys were really good songwriters, and so that's why this one has managed to hold on. I put it on the other day and I ended up listening to half the first side because it's just so well done. I have the skill, back to zero. Great pop. Great pop music. Sherbs. Yeah, this is one that you find for a dollar, 50 cents. It's worthless, so it's like I can't get anything in trade value for this. So I just keep it because of, like I did the other day, I played it and it was a great it stayed on the turntable. Mahavishnu Orchestra. Now, someone has talked about Return to Forever, and I still haven't... Now, if you happen to watch that, don't take it personally. Um, I just do the videos according to what I'm thinking and feeling. So you have come up because of this. I played this recently, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Between Nothingness and Eternity. Wow. Talk about a live album where sparks just fly. I mean, these guys were so hot and so intense that they had to be careful not to lose each other, you know, because sometimes the music would, like, be flying away from them. You can hear it on this album. Billy Cobham, Jerry Goodman, Yan Hammer, John McLaughlin, all of them. Rick Laird always holding things on the bass, very simply, but solid. And everyone else is just going crazy. And it brings to mind Return to Forever because Return to Forever's first album... The way they started with Light as a Feather and then the initial Return of Forever on ECM, those are my favorite Return of Forever albums when it was still more Brazilian. Then when they got into jazz rock, it was good, but it was a cartoon version of this to me. It's even at the time, and I liked it, you know, I liked it. You know, Hymn of the Seventh Galaxy, when I first heard it, I could hear that it was a, it was a, it was a Mahavishnu thing going on. It was like, what is this? Oh, this is fantastic. And it was, and it is. So there's more in Return to Forever. Um, I have a few of the records. They're over there. Um, I'll pull them when I play them sometime. 
maybe in the comments you might want to mention to me uh, something that about what the band means to you or why you, you're asking my opinion about the band. What's yours? Um, speaking of Brazilian music, I pulled this. Light in the Attic's reissue of Marcos Valle's uh, Vento Sul. It's just, just killer. It's just fantastic because it's the kind of music where melodically and mood-wise he captures like you there are like there are certain days where the sunlight and the mood of the day and something you did on the street you walked down or something you ate it's just ideal and it's just like ooh if this could just last forever this moment that's what the music is like to me on this album it's almost like out of a dream it's so so good so capturing i put the music on and i'm transported back into time i can literally imagine being in the time period this album was made which has got to be yep 1972 freaking fantastic i could uh, like i i could go on marcos valle vento sul i'd love to have more of his albums fantastic I was on a Brazilian kick, so I, lis I was listening to this album, which is another fantastic Brazilian musician and album. Egberto Gismonti, No Caipira. I hope I'm saying that right. And this is one of his albums that I have that was uh, is a Brazilian pressing. And this album is like, it's big. Um, it takes in everything from Brazilian to progressive rock to jazz to avant-garde to big string arrangements. This is... Um, amazing fantastic music Egberto Gismonti um, many many years ago I had the opportunity to see him live with Nana Vasconcelos and got to say hello to him afterwards and just speak briefly uh, to him so I got to say I meet I got to meet Egberto Gismonti incredible music incredible from Poland jazz musician Michael Urbanek fusion this again has uh, just some killer fusion jam funk stuff on it. Someone asked me, I posted this on Facebook and someone who wasn't familiar said, how does he compare to Jerry Goodman of Mahavishnu? And that's a fair uh, question. He doesn't play like Jerry Goodman, doesn't have the fire like that, but he has the jam and he has the signature sound. Um, I can tell Michael Urbanak is playing the violin when I hear it just after a few bars because of his style. He's got a signature style, like Jean-Luc Ponty, like Jerry Goodman. This is really good. Michael Urbanek, Fusion. Jade Warrior is an interesting rock band that came out of a psych band from the 60s called July. And um, this is one of their early albums, possibly their first album. And this is a weird album. I love, I love parts of it, and then there's parts of it that have not aged well for me. Like, for example, some of the lyrics on this album are downright misogynistic. Um, you know, they just talk about women like like uh, property in a way that I don't like, I've never liked. And back at this time, you could get away with it, you know, you know, if that's the kind of dude you were. But what's interesting about this band is the, the blend of flute, um, ethnic, uh, hints of music with hard rock. Weird band, Jade Warrior. Jade Warrior. Felt, not the English felt that came out of the uh, uh, late 70s. This is uh, a young American band that recorded this album, I think in the South, in Tennessee possibly, when the leader of the band was still only 16. So this is kind of a hard rock, slightly bluesy, but there's progressive elements too. There's organ work on here. This is really good. Felt. This is a reissue. Um, originals of this on the NASCO label. This is one of those records that originals go for big money. But the music, uh, you, this is good. It's um, not a hype record. It's a really good album. Really good. And does that, I think that catches me up. It does. With that in mind, um, I'll continue with some CDs, thinking of the person that asked. Some CDs that are sitting up here. Um, I haven't played this. I was actually just looking at it, about to play it. I've got this Whalers CD um, that I bought when I saw them live. It's made out of hemp. 
And this is after Bob Marley left the band, but um, this, the uh, Bob is still on the cover, along with uh, Family Man Barrett. And um, what's neat about this is at the concert, um, Bob Marley's mom's lawyer, who lives in the Midwest, was at the show, and he said, um, "You know, I, you know, I, w I got, to, you know, I want you to meet." I want, I want, not, I want you to meet, I want Family Man to meet you. Because Ralph knows my, my reputation here um, on bass. It was very cool because when I got backstage, you know, it's like, that's exactly what Ralph said. Hey, Family Man, here's somebody you got to meet. Here's a bass player you got to meet. Mind blowing. Um, I think I was too stunned to get his autograph or something. I don't know why I don't have his autograph, but here's a CD that's out that is going to get played. Here's a stack of CDs I pulled out of the garage where I go through phases where of entertaining myself. And in the early days of having a computer and being on the internet, I would just search for music, you know. And then I would make these mix CDs, uh, all kinds of groups. This one has everyone from Sly and the Family Stone to Stray Dog to Captain Beyond. And then I would, you know, mock up artwork that I'd find online for the covers. Can't see those too well. You know, that's another thing about CDs is, you know, th is there's just no comparison to the ex the uh, effect of the album cover, the size, you know. Albums are art. Albums are art. So with that in mind, I'm just going to go ahead and, 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 and cut the video here. And uh, thanks for watching.